Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Stockton Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. And now I'll turn it over to our presenters. We are in C1 for this evening, so first up we'll hear from UC San Diego. Thank you and welcome everyone. Um, so again, like she mentioned, we don't have a lot of time in here today. Um, so my first slide on this presentation um, is definitely a way for us to stay connected. Uh, my name is Corey. I'm an admissions officer at UC San Diego and also an alum at UC San Diego. So if you have any questions um, throughout the event, like she said, go ahead and use the uh, Q&A feature. Um, but after this event, these are gonna be the best ways to stay connected with our Office of Admissions. Um, you can sign up for a virtual one-on-one -on -one advising session, or you can send your email questions to the link down at the bottom, or to the email down at the bottom. Um, so a little bit about our campus. Um, UC San Diego is located in La Jolla, California. Um, it's a northern part of San Diego County. Um, these are just some highlights of our campus. We are a pretty big campus, just about 1,200 acres. Um, that's about two central parks in New York City. Uh, we are very close to the beach. This picture here that you see was taken at our Scripps, Scripps Institute of Oceanography, uh, where a lot of our marine biology students will spend some of their time. Um, next up, I want to highlight some of the different majors and programs that we offer at UC San Diego. We have over 140 different programs from eight different discipline areas. Um, won't go through all of them. You can find a complete list of majors and disciplines on our admissions website, admissions.ucsd.edu. Um, but I do want to highlight our CAPT programs here for our first year applicants. Um, these are the programs that you see in blue. Um, and a CAPT program, for those who don't know, just means that we put capacity or enrollment limits um, on these programs because it wouldn't be fair if we gave a spot to every single student who was interested in engineering, for example. Um, so if you are a first year applicant and you are interested in a CAPT program, you would definitely want to list it as your first or second choice on the application when you apply. Um, and then next up, I want to talk about our college system here at UC San Diego. Um, so we do do it a bit differently here. You're not grouped by your major or discipline. Um, instead, you can be in any one of our 140 majors and be placed in any one of our seven colleges. Uh, we really like our college system here. A lot of students um, say that they really enjoy this college system at UC San Diego because it takes our very large campus and breaks it down into smaller neighborhoods. Um, we like to think of them as communities or neighborhoods here on campus. Um, so as you can see, each college is essentially set up the same. They'll have the same resources for students advising um, honors programs, et cetera. Um, but each college is a little different in their general education courses that students have to take. Um, again, for more information, definitely visit our admissions website. Um, and then really quickly, this is just the undergraduate student body uh, makeup of our campus. So as you can see, just under 31,000 undergraduate students, half men, half women. Um, two thirds of our incoming students come in as first year and the other third as we do have students at UC San Diego from over 45 different states and 100 countries and regions throughout the world. Um, next, uh, I wanna go back one slide and talk about some uh, student life here at UC San Diego. Um, so we have over 600 clubs and organizations to choose from. Um, these will range from academic related, non-academic. Uh, we have intramural sports and clubs, um, everything you can think of. We have a, a club or an organization here on campus for it at UC San Diego. And if you don't see that club organization, you are encouraged to start that. Um, some of the campus events that you see there on the right, again, won't go through all of them because we don't have a lot of time, uh, but just know our students do know how to have fun at UC San Diego as well. <clears throat> um, and then did want to take a, a quick second to put our snapshot for our first year applicants for last year up here. Um, so we'd received 100,000 applications and admitted 38%. Um, don't want this GPA to jump out at anyone. This is not our average GPA. This is just the middle 50% for the 100 students, 100,000 students, I'm sorry, who applied. Um, and UC schools are now also test optional. Sorry about that. Um, so keep in mind that a ACT or SAT test is not required for admission. <clears throat> and then speaking of the application, I did want to highlight for our seniors in the audience, if you are interested in a UC school, you will definitely want to apply by November 30th. 
Um, there's one application for all nine of our undergraduate campuses. So if you're also interested in some other UCs, um, it's one application. There are also fee waivers available within that online application. Um, so if you qualify for a fee waiver, you can apply to up to four UC campuses for free. Um, and again, we don't have a lot of time. So I did want to also highlight um, a way to stay connected with our Office of Admissions on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, so follow us at UCSD Admissions. Another good resource for you all as well as our UC San Diego Admissions YouTube channel. Um, that's where you can find a lot of recorded events and presentations. Um, again, just another good way to stay connected. Um, and then lastly, before I pass it over to the next college, um, we want to put this back up. Again, this is going to be the best way to stay connected with the UC San Diego Office of Admissions after this event here is over. Um, again, my name is Corey from UC San Diego. We hope to get some of you seniors to apply. Um, but if you have any questions, again, feel free to take a picture of this or screenshot this um, screen here, and we will be more than happy to connect with you at a later time. Um, thank you. All right, and next up is Portland State University. Would help if I turned on my microphone and my video. So sorry about that. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Dave Kobzina, and I am the assistant director for transfer recruitment at Portland State University. I am also our admissions counselor who works directly with students from the Central Valley. So if you have any questions after tonight, I will be a good point of contact for you. Uh, Portland State University, we have about 26,000 students altogether. We are the second largest university here in Oregon, and that includes about 21,000 undergraduates. Even of that population, you have a fair number of students taking classes part time in the evenings and on the and and uh, yeah, in the evenings online and uh, and that's I don't know where I was going with that. So sorry, it's one of those days. Anyways, um, the thing about the big thing about Portland State is we are located right in downtown Portland. We're the state's only urban institution. We're on about 50 acres. It's not that big. We are about eight blocks from Pioneer Square, which is what's considered Portland's living room. So while we are an urban campus, we still have a lot of the traditional college activities that I will talk about in just a second. We are the most diverse four-year institution here in Oregon. Just under half of our students identify as coming from a racially or ethnically diverse background. 37% identify as first generation. We are also very diverse when we speak about our students' social, religious, political, cultural, economic backgrounds. Everything that you as an individual brings to the table makes us more diverse as a collective whole. We do have 10 residence halls. Housing is guaranteed for students on campus, even though it is not required. If you live with us for the first year, we can guarantee up to all four years. We have 12 different cultural and resource centers. It says 11 on here, but we do have 12. Uh, we have more than 200 clubs and organizations, very civic minded when it comes to community service, student government and sustainability initiatives. We are a division one school for athletics and the Big Sky Conference for everything except softball, which is part of the Pacific Coast Conference. The motto of Portland State is let knowledge serve the city. Why do we find that to be important? Because we are still using Portland as a whole as our classroom. In order to graduate from Portland State University, you are required to do an internship or a community based project, although many will do both. Portland is known as a Silicon Forest. It is very high tech. Intel is the state's largest private employer with more than 10,000 people working there. Approximately 1,000 of them are PSU alums. Now, we do offer more than 200 different academic programs that you can choose from housed under these different schools and colleges. Some of our bigger programs are going to be in business and engineering. Those are the top two, along with the health sciences, psychology, and graphic design. We do not require that students come in with a declared major that is only mandated by the end of your sophomore year. That said, you are still required to declare an advising pathway. We have seven of these where we group similar majors together. And why this is also important is even if you are undecided, you will select the pathway that most closely aligns with your potential goals. So you will have an assigned academic advisor from day one. They will help you with course planning, career planning. So they are with you throughout the four years. The only time you need to switch academic advisors is if you are switching advising pathways. Uh, with the University Honors College, we have the only urban focused Honors College in the United States. And with our academics, we do not have any impacted programs. 
from an admission standpoint, a couple things that we are looking at. First is a 3.0 GPA, that's cumulative unweighted, uh, 9 through 12, and then our subject areas, all of which need to be met with a C minus or better. We're looking for four years of English, three years of math through at least algebra two, three years of science, and three years of social science. If you meet the GPA and the subject requirements, you are admissible to Portland State. We are a test optional university. We have been for many years. Nothing is changing there. When it comes to applying, we ask that you submit the PSU undergraduate application. It is on our website. We are not part of the Common App. Uh, we also have a $50 application fee, although there is a fee deferral you can use instead. And then we need your official high school transcripts. Once everything is submitted, uh, it'll take us roughly two weeks in which to make a decision. We operate on rolling admissions, which means there are no formal application deadlines, but we still encourage everyone to apply by sometime in the fall. Now, cost of attendance, we do break it down into two different categories, specifically for California residents. You will see that standard tuition and fees for out-of-state folks is just under $30,000 per year. We are part of WUI, the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, which I'll talk about more in a second. With that tuition, it's cut by more than half to just over $14,000 per year. When we factor everything into the equation, even some of this includes funds that are not being paid directly to Portland State. Generally, it is going to be about $47,000 per year. With WUI, it is a little, little over $32,000 per year. Now, how to qualify for WUI? You need one of three things, either a 3.0 cumulative unweighted GPA, a 1270 on the SAT, or a 27 composite on the ACT. One of those three means you are guaranteed WUI for all four years, so long as you continue to maintain a 2.0 GPA or higher once you are at Portland State. You will see that there is an actual application deadline tied to WUI, and that is June 15th, and then you must submit your final high school transcripts by August 1st. There are no major restrictions to WUI, and we do not cap the number of students who can receive it. If you do not qualify for WUI, we have the Out-of-State Opportunity Scholarship, which is good for up to $10,000 per year. Minimum GPA to be considered is a 2.5. Unfortunately, students cannot receive both WUI and Out-of-State Opportunity, and there are, of course, other scholarships you can apply for as well. And then if you have questions after tonight, as I said, I am the admissions counselor for Northern California. Uh, here's my email address and my phone number, and I hope to speak with you soon. Thank you very much. All right, so next we'll hear from Whittier College. All right, let me just make sure I'm sharing my screen. Wonderful, hello, my name is Megan Post. I'm the Associate Director of Admission here at Whittier College. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn about all these great colleges today. So we'll jump right in. Um, so Whittier is a nationally respected college of the liberal arts and sciences located in Southern California. Our liberal arts curriculum encourages students to explore ideas from many different fields, whether it's history, business, chemistry, or psychology, and help, help, we help you make those connections between all of our curriculum. Our environment will encourage you to challenge yourself and try new opportunities. Um, when it comes to our campus size, we're 1,700 traditional undergraduates with our average class size being about 19 students. Our welcoming classroom setting allows students to know their professors, feel comfortable asking questions, and actively engage in class discussion and activities. When it comes to academic programs, Whittier gives you many choices. Students can choose from over 30 majors. Among the most popular are gonna be biology, kinesiology, business administration, and psychology. We also have some pre-professional programs like pre-med, pre-physical therapy, as well as a 3-2 engineering program in partnership with the University of Southern California. Uh, students can also double major or combine a major with any of our minors that are listed on this list with asterisks. So the ones with asterisks are only offered as minors, but any of the majors you can turn into minors as well. We also have a special program for students that already have a specific postgraduate path in mind called our Whittier Scholars Program. Um, WSP students tailor their major and coursework around a field or career that they're interested in. Um, some of the majors that students have created through that Whittier Scholars Program is um, public health and tourism, um, institutions, and social justice. So there's a ton of majors that you can choose um, within that Whittier Scholars Program. 
Uh, when it comes to our campus community, Whittier is recognized as one of the most diverse liberal arts colleges in the entire country. And our student body reflects the diversity that Southern California is known for. Um, at Whittier, you'll encounter a variety of ethnicities, religions, economic backgrounds, and gender identities, plus international students from around the globe. Uh, we have, right, our student organizations, we have about 70 here on campus, everything from student senate, societies, Whittier Tells Funnies, as well as our Food Recovery Network. Um, we also are very active in athletic sports. We have 11 sports for men and 11 sports for women, and about one third of our students take part in athletics. Um, we compete in the NCAA Division III, which means that even though we take sports seriously, the number one priority is always academics. Um, the goal is to be a true scholars athlete. Um, so we want to go back to our location just a little bit. I mentioned we're in Southern California, but want to talk more about the opportunities that are available in our area. So we're outside, just outside of downtown LA, about a 20 minute drive from downtown LA um, on a good day. Obviously with traffic, you can always add more time, but we straddle LA and Orange County. So there's a lot of opportunities for internships and a lot of opportunities for exploring the natural area for outdoor activities, such as hiking, as well as um, going to the local beaches as well. So we're in a great location where you're able to take advantage of all the opportunities that Southern California has to offer. Um, and going on to our admission requirements, every, um, every as we're going through the common application, um, we require four elements, your personal statement. And we, we ask students to spend a lot of time on the personal statement because that gives us a more insight into who you are beyond just your GPA and test score. Um, we also require a letter of recommendation from a teacher or counselor. And typically we like to see a recommendation from someone that knew you your junior year or your senior year. Um, we also require you to submit your high school transcripts and if you've taken any college courses to also submit those. Um, but with your high school transcripts, we are looking at your ninth through 11th grade year and only at your academic courses. Um, so we'll take out ROP, PE courses, athletic courses as well. And then we also um, accept the SAT or ACT. We are test optional. So if you decide that your scores are not direct representation of who you are as a student, or if you haven't taken the test, which may be very common this year, um, we are test optional and we won't review your application any differently. And you also will not be limited on the amount of scholarships that you will receive. On the right hand side, this is our admitted student um, range. So we don't have a minimum GPA or test score that you have to have, but this is the range of last year's class that came in. Um, we have two application tracks, our early action, which you would have to apply by November 15th, and our regular decision of February 1. Um, when it comes to financial aid, our tuition right now is 48,000 a year, but we give a lot of merit-based um, aid. So the first award is our John Greenleaf Whittier um, Scholarship, which is based off of your academic profile as well as your fit to the institution. And that ranges anywhere from 15,000 up to 36,000 a year. And then you also can um, get some need-based aid based off of your FAFSA application. Um, and then the Leadership and Talent Scholarship is an application that you apply for extra funding. And I know I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna leave you with my contact information, which is right here on the right. But thank you so much. All right, and next we'll hear from Holy Names University. Thank you very much, everyone. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Gabriel Ching, and I am the enrollment counselor for the Stockton area. Um, let me go ahead and let's begin. A little bit more about Holy Names. We are a very small private Catholic university in Oakland, California. Uh, specifically, where we are actually located within Oakland Hills, which is about 15 minutes south of Berkeley and about 25 minutes east of San Francisco. Uh, we've been located in Oakland since about 100 for it since about 1868. So if you want to get technical, that's about 152 years this year. So we're a pretty old university. Um, within our campus, we love to utilize our location um, to provide students opportunities for internships on and off campus employments at the numerous tech companies and hospitals in our area. Um, currently, this is a small snippet of what of um, 
who we are. Uh, we are a very small school being that we only have about 960 students total, which includes both graduate and undergraduate students. Um, if you're looking for a small school with a very intimate setting, our average class sizes are about 10 to 15 students currently. Um, with that class, small class sizes, you're gonna be able to build those personalized relationships with all of your classmates, other staff members and professors alike. Um, being at a small school, none of our current majors are impacted. So students, what that means for you is that you're gonna be able to get into those programs. You're gonna be able to get into those classes and more importantly, graduate when you're supposed to. Um, also within our small community, we are also ranked within the top 10 most ethnically diverse campuses according to US News and the Western region. So you're gonna meet a lot of different students from different cultures and backgrounds, which is really gonna be a great experience for you. Um, if you're interested in living on campus, we have four different dormitory halls for you to select from, as well as each dormitory hall has three specific room types. The first one would be a single where you will be by yourself. The second one is a double where you'll have one roommate. And the third one is a suite where you'll be with about two to three roommates. Each dorm room will, you'll, um, will have a one twin size bed for you, um, a desk, a desk chair, a mini fridge and a microwave, a pretty large size closet with a, uh, with a shoe rack as well as two very large overhead storage shelves, um, a dresser as well as a sink. Our singles do have bathrooms. However, uh, most of our doubles and suites will have to share bathrooms amongst the floor. All of our um, dormitory halls as well as our bathrooms are um, serviced and cleaned by our campus services departments two to three times a day. Um, within every dormitory hall, we do have common spaces. These common spaces are located on every floor and they could be living rooms with TVs, uh, Playstations, Xboxes, Netflix accounts, Hulu accounts, um, ping pong tables, billiard tables, outside basketball courts, and even uh, a couple of barbecue pits for students to enjoy from as well. Um, within every dormitory hall, you will also have your own laundry room and every laundry machine on campus is credit card accessible. So if anyone's been to a laundromat, for, don't worry about quarters, you don't need them, keep them at home. Um, lastly, we do have two meal plan options for students to choose from. The first one is a 19 week meal plan, which will be your unlimited meal plan in our all you can eat buffet cafeteria, as well as the second one is a 14 meals per week plan, which will have you be able to eat one meal, I mean two meals per day. Both of those options come with flex dollars. You can view these flex dollars as like gift cards. So um, you can use these uh, specific flex dollars per semester as they do not roll over per semester. And you can use them to either pay lunch for any visitors you have on campus, or you can use them for any additional items that might not be a part of your meal plan in our downstairs coffee shop. Here's a small list of all of the undergraduate programs we have listed for all of our students. Um, if you are able to take a screenshot or take a picture on your phone, please feel free to do so. Um, if you're looking for all this information later, you are more than happy to go to our website, um, hnu.edu, and look for our program finder where you'll be able to search all of your majors and learn more and more about everything that comes with it. Our top majors currently are nursing, business, education, biology, and kinesiology with criminology and psychology coming in at close six and sevens. Um, within business, nursing, psychology, and education, students are able to actually transition straight into graduate programs. We do have a small list of concentrations located on the upper right-hand corner of this slide, and you can add any of those concentrations to any of the listed majors there. Um, our pre-professional preparation programs listed below that can and will be added within your majors. So if you're a biology major, for example, you would also be taking classes that can help you get into dentistry school, medical school, and anything similar within the healthcare field. Here's the smallest of our clubs and organizations on campus. We have about 15, I believe about 15 listed here currently. A lot of these clubs have been with us all throughout our time um, since we've been uh, in existence. Um, some of my favorite clubs are actually like our Ashton, which is our student government. Our BSU actually runs a lot of our talent shows as well as um, speaker series where musicians and authors come onto campus to talk to our students. Um, as well as we do have a great uh, student athletic advisory committee that runs one of our most popular student led events on campus. Um, the Latino Senior's Club runs all of our Flowy Canto events as well as a lot of our dances on campus too. I'm actually the club advisor of the Pacific Islanders Club and we run a lot of, we run two different duels per year as well as dance lessons and we sell food during finals week as well. A lot of our clubs are also based off of community service. So if you're one to really wanna get involved and give back to the community, you'll be able to join the Red Cross Club, Club Impact, the Loud and Proud Club as we really are a school that's focused on getting students involved, but also um, showing students that you can get your education and give back as well. I know I'm running out of time, so really quickly, we are NCAA Division II school. We play in the Pac West Conference, so anyone that has any sports listed here, please feel free to contact me as well. 
Um, and then let me go ahead and show you our application process. It's very easy. Both of those options listed there are completely free and the only document we're requiring are your transcripts. Yes, students, every single undergraduate student receives financial aid from our school, some of them being our merit scholarships or HNU award scholarships. For our merit scholarship, all you have to do is get accepted into our university and you'll receive something between 15 and $22,000 per year that's renewable until you graduate, as well as our HNU award scholarship just needs a FAFSA application every single year as well. Here's my contact information, everyone. So please feel free to take a picture of it or screenshot it as well. I would love to talk to each and every one of you after this presentation and thank you so much. All right, and next up is the University of Portland. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, my name is Noelle Kildazoo. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I am one of the admissions counselors at University of Portland. Specifically, I have the privilege of working with folks coming from the Stockton area. So feel free to screen grab my contact information or even head to our website if you missed it. Um, so I'm just going to provide you a general UP overview. There's so much information to cover. Um, but to start, we are a small, private, comprehensive uh, liberal arts university located in Portland, Oregon. Um, Dave was able to share a lot about Portland, um, so I won't share too much more. But Portland is a very unique and very vibrant city. Um, to give you some perspective, it's located in the northernmost part of the state of Oregon. And it's um, divided pretty much in half between east and west sides by the Willamette River. Our campus is located about 15 minutes north of the heart of downtown um, in a neighborhood called University Park. We're surrounded on three sides by that Willamette River on a little hill that we like to call the bluff. Um, and then the fourth side of our campus is actually the University Park neighborhood. Um, so our students have the best of both worlds in terms of location. They have the benefits of being in the city, um, near the city, the industry, the nightlife, the entertainment options, the cultural experiences, the fine art scene, um, but then they're far enough away where they still feel like they're in a college town. Um, our campus is fairly small, not only in terms of acreage, so very easily to navigate on foot, but also in terms of our student population. We have about 4,200 students total at University of Portland, and that includes our graduate students. We are a predominantly undergraduate serving institution with about 3,800 of those students um, being our undergraduates. Um, in terms of size, you're going to see this impact not only the campus community, but also the academic experience that you're going to get at UP. Um, our average class size is just about 24 and our student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1. This means you are getting that personalized academic experience, not only with advisors and mentors there to walk alongside you throughout your four years, um, but also within the classroom, you're going to raise your hand, get called on by name, engage in dialogue. Our largest lecture hall on campus only seats about 60. So when we say 24 is the average, we do mean that 24 is the average. Um, as a Catholic institution, we're affiliated with the Congregation of Holy Cross. Um, about 45% of our students self-identify as Catholic, and the other 55% are coming from a different faith background or no faith background. So regardless of your religious identity, students are welcomed and celebrated at UP. Um, there are a buffet of options to get involved in spiritual life if that's something you're seeking to make part of your college experience campus ministry, different religious clubs, daily mass, um, but that's all up to you. It's always an open invitation. Um, moving on to touch more about on our academics, um, we are made up of five schools in total. So we have our College of Arts and Sciences, which is the largest school, and it houses our undeclared natural science, social science, humanities, and um, pre-med and pre-health majors and minors. And then we have our four professional schools for nursing, engineering, education, and business. All five schools are direct entry. So what that means is that when you apply as a certain major, the admissions office is going to read your application on behalf of that school. And then if and when you are accepted, you're accepted directly into your program of choice. You don't have to meet a certain prerequisite later. You don't have to fight to get in a certain class in order to get into the program. You are in that, you have that spot and you have it all four years. 
as a liberal arts university, students are going to be taking a little bit of everything in addition with their major. Um, so those are our 13 core curriculum classes. And this, these range from philosophy, fine arts, theology, natural science, history, mathematics, um, just to name a few. Um, and again, these are 13 classes that every undergraduate student will take. Last note on academics, all of our students are going to engage in some form of practical work experience during their time at UP. We don't want you to walk across that graduation stage at the end of your four years with just a piece of paper. We want you to be able to have applied your knowledge and really understand the content as it pertains to your profession of choice. Um, so for our four professional schools, that's a really tangible experience. Nursing students are doing dedicated education hours, which is their clinical work in their simulated lab hours. Our engineering students are doing a capstone project, solving a problem for a real company, um, real life, hands-on experience. Our education majors are doing student teaching hours, starting off in the classroom their first semester of their freshman year, um, really getting to know if they like kids or not. Uh, business majors doing internships. And then when you get into the um, College of Arts and Sciences, there's a lot more flexibility there, right? Because those majors are so wide reaching. So oftentimes this looks like research opportunities, whether it's original research or alongside a faculty member or even um, uh, internships. So. Um, I will finally talk about our community and campus life. There's a lot of different ways to get involved on campus, um, but I would first like to say that no one University of Portland student is alike. They're coming from all over. California is actually our largest state representation um, with about 30% of our students, so we actually beat out Oregon. Um, so we're not a commuter school. Um, one of the biggest ways students get involved is going to be within the residence halls. About 60% of students live on campus. Um, other ways too is with our Division I sports, club and intramural teams, um, our Moreau Center for Service and Justice for giving back and participating in a social justice immersion, um, or even studying abroad, and any major is welcome to study abroad. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me, but I am out of time. All right, and our final presenter for this session is Oregon State University Cascades, and then we will have time for the Q&A. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Emily. I am an admissions counselor at Oregon State University Cascades located in Bend, Oregon. If you've never been to Bend before or if you have, just to kind of give you a little reminder of where we're at, we're pretty much in the dead center of the state. So we get to explore and experience all of the great things that Central Oregon has to offer. And I think that that's probably one of the best parts about our campus. I'll get a little bit into that soon. But on your screen, you'll see a quick overview of OSU Cascades. Um, but one thing that I do like to include is that we are a brand new campus. We are the first college campus to open in Oregon in 50 years. So we are quite literally setting the stage for history growing underneath our feet for students on campus. We are a smaller university that's connected to our larger parent campus over in Corvallis, Oregon, which is Oregon State University. But for us, we have about 1,400 students on our campus with our average class size around 18. So you're going to see a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one interactions with faculty, peer members, community members, and you're definitely going to be known by your first name and you're not a number on our campus, which is pretty amazing. Um, it's rare that you pass by someone in the hall that you don't know, whether you're a staff member like me or a student, which I think is pretty great. We have 21 undergraduate programs and growing. We're adding a few programs every single year. And as some of the great ways that we're connected to Oregon State University is that you have really strong financial aid and scholarship opportunities because it is a larger um, federally funded or federally um, supported university with lots of different research opportunities as well. Um, but we also take part of the Western Undergraduate Exchange, which is new for this year. Um, you also are a part of the alumni network. So whether you walk across the stage in Corvallis or in Bend, you receive that high quality Oregon State education. We also have a ton of study abroad and internship opportunities, which I'll touch on a little bit in just a moment here. But like I said, Bend is definitely the biggest reason why students come and experience our campus. With over 300 days of sun on average per year, you have so much to do and explore outside um, in all four seasons that we experience. So whether you are a biker, a trail runner, skier, snowboarder, you like water sports, camping, anything like that, we have so many outdoor opportunities for you to explore in and around town, being right next to the Cascade Mountain Range. There's just endless um, ways to get outside and to balance out that rigorous academic schedule 
with something fun. If you're not much of an outdoorsy person or you just like to do lots of things um, other than that, we have a really vibrant arts and entertainment scene in Bend, great concerts, festivals, restaurants, places to um, shop and explore as well. And kind of moving into our options for programs that we have on our campus, as I mentioned, we have 21 undergraduate programs and over 30 minors and options. We have a lot of the big ticket majors that students are often looking for, such as biology with pre-health professional pathways, psychology, business, things like that. But we also offer some programs specific to our Bend campus. So those programs are more tailored to the types of things that Central Oregon is in need of, where we have a lot of job opportunities and also things that students are really interested in. Um, um, so for example, you'll find things like energy systems engineering, which is a very unique engineering degree, outdoor products, which is a brand new major, only one of, it's one of two of its kind in the entire nation, and our hospitality management um, program as well. So you'll see all of the different programs listed on your screen, and we also do have some graduate programs, and we are about to launch a doctor in physical therapy program. One of my favorite things about our programs is that not only are you going to walk across the stage and get your bachelor's degree, but you are going to have a guaranteed experiential learning opportunity, at least one of these, if not multiple. Oftentimes students are finding themselves in multiple um, opportunities within this realm of things. So whether that's a study abroad um, option for you, an internship, research project, service learning project, capstone, there's multiple different ways that you are going to guarantee get involved with your um, major of choice and within the job field that you want. A lot of times these are leading to job opportunities. We have a few um, programs that actually do have a 100% job placement rate. So a lot of that is because of these wonderful opportunities that students are taking advantage of. To show you a little bit more around Bend and the amazing place that we're involved in, I wouldn't consider Bend a college town, but rather we're a huge part of the community. So right here is the Deschutes River. This runs three minutes away, walking distance from our campus. As you can see, lots of amazing things to do outdoors in this area. I really enjoy um, floating the river during the summertime. It's a popular thing to do. Mount Bachelor for any of you snow enthusiasts, skier, snowboarder, sledders even, um, lots of things to do um, at the Bachelor and it's only 23 minutes from campus. And then to give you an idea of what our campus looks like in the perspective of Bend, in the middle of your screen there, you'll see our three buildings that we currently have. Because we opened in 2016 with our first building and then continuing on forward since then, we are slowly but surely building our campus. So in the center of the screen, you will see the residence hall followed by the dining building and then Tyson Hall. You can see the Deschutes River on the right-hand side and Mount Bachelor on, or on the left-hand side and Mount Bachelor on the right. And all of that open space on the bottom of our screen is where our campus is currently expanding. We are actually opening a brand new building um, fall of 2021. Inside of our residence hall, this is definitely one of our most popular spaces on campus. We have capacity for over 300 students on campus, um, multiple different room styles. The one that I've shown here tonight is our double with a shared bathroom. Um, most of our rooms have their own bathrooms. We also do have some private baths as well. We have an abundance of student life on campus with over 30 different clubs and opportunities. So let me know if I can give you more info on that. And then lastly, I just wanted to say that wherever you're at in your adventure, we are all here to support you. We're very excited, whatever college you end up going to. But if you have questions on how to become a Ben Beeve here at OSU Cascades, my information's on the screen. Thank you so much for your time tonight and good luck with your search. Thanks, everybody. Thank you to all the presenters. So now we have just about uh, seven minutes for Q&A. So I'm going to invite all of the panelists to come back on the screen um, and feel free to type questions, type, type answers to those questions that are in the Q&A or answer them live. And uh, while we are addressing those questions, I want to invite all of the panelists in presentation order to share with our audience a fun fact, unique tradition, something you didn't get to in your presentation, just something um, that will leave a lasting impression of your school in these last couple of minutes. So we'll back go back to UC San Diego for this. And looks like Corey has not rejoined us, so we'll come back to him and go to Portland State. 
Great, thank you. So I wouldn't call this so much a fun fact about Portland State, but, but more broadly, the city of Portland. Uh, we have more than 700 food carts in Portland, Oregon. It's the largest uh, number per capita for any city our size in the country. On campus alone, we have between 25 and 30. So if you like good food, definitely a great city in which to be. Plus there's no sales tax in Oregon, so that's a plus. And I can speak for Noel and Emily on that. And Megan, did you want to go next? All right, we'll move on to Holy Names. Thank you. Um, so one of my favorite fundraisers that we actually put on on campus, and just uh, just for a quick note, we don't require students to do any community service if you don't want to, but we actually um, to an event every year, which might sound crazy, that's actually um, it's actually inspired by the WWE, um, where they put on their WrestleMania event. Um, so and it's an event called Hawk Mania that we put on every March, aside from this past March because of shelter in place. And the entire purpose of the event is to hold a live professional wrestling show uh, with actual professional wrestlers, a real ring, um, actual matches where people get put through tables and hit, get hit by chairs. And our students and staff members actually get trained by these wrestlers to be in it as well. The whole purpose of the event is to um, build profits and all of those ticket profits and every single cent that came to that event goes straight to the Make-A-Wish organization. And actually we're very fortunate in that in the year of 2019 in November, we're actually selected to, um, to present a wish or reveal a wish out to a student as well. Um, so for, I echoed what Dave said, by the way, about the no sales tax and the food carts, Portland's great if you're interested in, um, if you're a foodie. Um, but for University of Portland, a really fun tradition we have is something called the Villa Maria Drum Squad. Villa Maria is one of our all-male dorms on campus, and the Drum Squad is a group of people. You don't have to live in Villa Maria to be part of it, um, but they have these snare drums, they have these kilts, they paint themselves purple, and at every um, soccer game, they lead the students out into the student section, um, chanting, um, you know, the chant that everyone gets to learn and throwing purple smoke bombs. Purple is one of our colors, um, and it is just such a sight to see, and you hear them coming from like a mile away, um, and then after the first game of the season, um, soccer is a big sport for us at UP. Uh, after the first game of the season, we um, all the students head down to River Campus, which, as I mentioned, our campus is um, on a little bluff, and so River Campus is just right along the Willamette, and so they'll go down there and have um, a university-sponsored event with games and food and that sort of thing. So it's very fun to see. I wish I was a student and got to participate. <laughs> I love hearing all these facts, by the way. I'm here for this. I love it. <laughs> um, I'm Emily with OSU Cascades again. Um, I, there's a lot of fun facts that I could share, just things in general. One thing I think is really interesting about our campus is that our largest, our, our largest club on campus right now is our rock climbing club. There's over, I think, 170 students in the club. And if you're doing the math with how many students we have, that's almost 10% of our student population, um, which is really exciting because we have a lot of students who are like expert climbers and compete on our team that qualified for nationals last year. But we also have students who've literally never touched a rock wall in their entire life. And they're all just getting together and going to Smith Rock State Park, which is really close to us and climbing discovering new places in town, just getting together. Um, and I just I just think it's really interesting because it's like, it started with these two guys who love it and now it's huge. And so um, just kind of a good example of wherever you go to school, you can start a club about anything and it could be, it could be amazing. So, yeah. All right, and we had a question come in, I believe during the last presentation that was about out of state tuition costs. Um, so maybe all of the Oregon schools could just go through those costs real quick for our students. So I'll go first. Our out of state tuition itself for tuition and fees is about uh, $30,000 per year. But for students who are receiving WUI, Western Undergraduate Exchange, it is just over $14,000 per year. 
Uh, since University of Portland is a private institution, we don't charge separate tuition fees for in and out of state students. Our total cost of attendance estimated is about $67,000 and you can expect that cost for the next year as we are not increasing tuition. And for OSU Cascades, we're right about 30,000 per year, but that's before any financial aid or scholarships come into play. We've had several scholarship opportunities that I didn't touch on. Um, we have our provost out of state scholarship. We have the Louis um, scholarship as well, new for this year. And last year we actually did a housing stipend where we paid for all out of state um, first year students, first year of housing and dining. So we might be doing that again this year. We're hoping to see um, kind of how things play out, but that's definitely something to consider as well. We are just about at time. Uh, Noel, did you want to address the question about university rent before I we end up? I was going to type a response, but I will definitely just answer live because um, it's quicker. <laughs> um, so for University of Portland, there are different charges for housing depending on if you are in a single, um, double, triple, or quad, which is four people in a room. So there are there's a breakdown of housing costs on our website, including a breakdown of meal plan costs. Um, and so if you want, you can email me and I can direct you to that link or you can find it on our website easily by um, searching for uh, total cost of attendance and it will come up or tuition and fees. You'll search something and it'll come up. <laughs> Perfect. And we are right at quarter past, so we'll go ahead and wrap things up. I want to thank you, uh, say thank you to all of our presenters, all of the panelists and um, students who stuck around and asked all those great questions. When you close this window, there will be a link to a quick four question survey. And we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. And also, again, this is just one of many different sessions being hosted, so be sure to keep an eye out for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at the same website where you registered. So once again, I'll say thank you to all the presenters and all of the participants this evening and have a great night.